Um, <laughs> I've got to fix the intonation on my 50 year old Yamaha classical guitar. It's a lovely guitar. But over the years, um, I think what's happened is the bridge has just tipped forward a little bit and it's, it's brought this saddle this way by just probably about a millimeter, maybe a little bit more. But what that's had the effect of doing is it's sharpened all of the notes at the 12th fret. Or, well, in theory, it's sharpened all the notes beyond the nut, but uh, the, the problem is most noticeable at the octave position. <laughs> Let's see if I can play this up, upside down. Hopefully you can hear that that G string in particular is quite sharp. It may not be very obvious, the, the problem is subtle, but of course when you're playing at the octave position um, things become quite noticeable. Now in order to explain what's going on, uh, I think the best thing to do is discuss how we set the intonation on a steel string guitar, because on a steel string guitar Things are a whole lot more difficult. If this was a steel string guitar, the saddle would look more like this. And if, if we say this is the nominal, what we call the intonation point, just, just at the front of the saddle here, i.e. twice the distance to the 12th fret, um, in other words the scale length, then generally speaking on a steel string guitar, the saddle will be about a millimetre further on on the top string and about four millimetres further on on the bottom string. Now this, this can vary because of the gauges of strings but as a, as a, a generalisation that's about the case. And we don't get that on a, on a classical guitar and why not? Well let, let's consider what we're doing here. There is an effect um, that when we fret the string we're effectively stretching the string a little bit and we need to compensate for that. But actually we, we only generally need about half a millimetre compensation on a steel string guitar to make up for that fact uh, because the, the effect of effectively what is a two millimetre bend it, it only has about, I don't know, about a one or two cent sharpening of the string and we only have to push the, 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 the bridge back by about half a millimetre, roughly. Um, but in fact this, this effect is the same for all the strings, so if that was the only effect all we'd be doing is pushing the saddle back by half a millimetre to compensate for this. There is a much bigger effect that we're compensating for on a steel string guitar and the fa that's the fact that the strings are stiff and when they go over the bridge there is effectively a null point um, around the, the bridge and, in, and indeed at the fret at the other end. I keep saying bridge, I mean saddle. And this, this null area where effectively the string isn't really vibrating. If we were able to put a tiny little hinge right on the saddle so that the string was sort of infinitely floppy so it was free to hinge around that point we wouldn't need this compensation but because we're in the real world and, and the strings have a stiffness to them we have a sort of dead zone and on a steel string guitar this effect is quite pronounced. It's about three millimetres here or a millimetre and a half at each end at the fret and at here so we're, we're compensating about three or yeah three and a half millimetres here and maybe another half a millimetre here. So those two effects combined, the bending of the string when we fret and the, the, the dead zone means we, we're compensating by a millimetre um, here and four millimetres here. But we don't get that on a classical guitar. At least we don't get it to such a big extent. And the reason for that is that classical guitar strings are floppy <laughs> and springy. They, they act very differently to steel strings. Anybody who's played a classical guitar will know that you can't really bend a note on a classical guitar. And that's because the string is far more elastic or in terms of what we call the Young's modulus, the Young's modulus is only about a hundredth of a steel string, which, which means that when we stretch the string, um, we don't get the increase in tension in the string that we do with a steel string. Uh, we, we can stretch the, the, the classical guitar string by quite a lot, 
and the note hardly changes at all. Whereas on a steel string guitar, you can you can bend a note up by several semitones just by uh, stretching the string, you know, a few millimeters by 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 bending. Um, so, for that reason, we don't need generally to compensate a classical guitar um, saddle for this bending effect. It's it's much much less than on a steel string guitar. It is there, but it's a lot less. But also, the this dead zone on a classical guitar gain is a lot less than on a steel string guitar, and it works in in a, in a slightly different way. The thickest string on a classical guitar, in terms of the core, is the G string. So, for stiffness, the, um, the, the G string is the worst offender in terms of needing to compensate. Um, but it's still very floppy compared to a steel string. So, what we need to do um, compensation-wide on a classical guitar is much less than on a steel string guitar, and we can usually do the compensation within the width of a saddle perpendicular to the strings, but the biggest area where we need to compensate is on the G string, um, because all the strings are pretty floppy, and core-wise, the G string is actually the stiffest on the guitar, much more so than the E string, which has a fairly thin core. Um, so we don't have to do much compensation on the wound strings or the top strings, but any compensation we do do, we need to do most on the G string. So now we understand why we need to compensate, but now we've got to understand how much we have to compensate by. Now we need a tuner that will tell us how many cents flat or sharp we are, and this is the Peterson iStrobosoft uh, app on my phone. And this is going to be a bit awkward, I've got to try and hold this so you can see it while I'm playing the string. But if we look at the G string, that's about three or four cents flat. And then when we play the, the octave, that's two, maybe three cents sharp. So we've got to compensate by about six cents on the G-string. We've got to push the saddle back that way to uh, flatten the, the note at the octave position. But how much? I brought my, my saddle back pretending to be the 12th fret. Um, so we know that we're six cents sharp at the 12th fret. And what that means, a cent is a hundredth of a semitone. So we, in order to flatten the note, we need to move that 12th fret back by six hundredths of the distance between the 12th and 13th fret. This is about 18 millimetres. So we need to move that 12th fret back by about a millimetre in order to get to compensate for the, the fact that the 12th fret is sharp. But of course, we can't do that. We're, we're having to deal with the, with the saddle, moving the saddle this way instead of taking the fret back that way. So if we know that the fret has got to move back by a, a just over one millimeter, another way of doing that is to scale the whole scale length up by moving the saddle back two millimetres that way. I hope that makes sense, because the, the string is doubling in length. So instead of going one millimetre back that way, we go two millimetres back that way. I hope that makes sense. But from that calculation, we can work out individually, string by string, how far we've got to move the saddle back. Now, there's a catch, isn't there always? I have already fitted a compensated saddle to this. I created a new saddle, compensated it, and I've pushed the G-string as far back that way as it will go. And in fact, I've actually pushed it further back than the rear of the saddle, because this is a two and a half millimeter saddle in a two millimeter slot. I've got the saddle hanging over the back of the slot by half a millimeter. So the G-string is already half a millimeter further back than the rear of the slot and it's still not compensated properly. 
So I've actually got to move this back another two millimeters in order to compensate it. So I need a saddle that is four millimeters wide up top here, still fitting into my two millimeter slot. <laughs> so I've got to go and make another saddle and because I don't have a blank that's uh, a suitable size, I've got to make it out of raw bone. Should be fun. Um, <laughs> so I need to go make myself another saddle and then I need to put it in here and see if we can get this G-string just a couple of millimetres further back so that the G-string in particular and all the other strings are properly compensated. Let's try that again with a little bit more control. I've super glued the saddle using masking tape onto a thin piece of steel, so should have some uh, better results. On the previous nut, I, I just filed away to get the ledge. I've got to take this, this edge down here uh, to create my L-shaped nut with the overhang. Uh, but that's a fairly inaccurate way of doing it. The, the, the file moves all over the place. And I was eventually able to get a nice straight square ledge. Um, but it was very inaccurate. But, but that was okay because I'd got a couple of millimetres either side to play with. So I then just filed everything down to uh, relative to the ledge I've created. I've only got a millimetre to play with here. So I'm going to see if I can cut the first part of the ledge. I haven't got much saw blade spare. Um, uh, this may not work, but we'll give it a go at least this way, I might get a, a better edge. It does appear to be working, although it doesn't seem to be cutting in the middle at the moment. Just This is a pulse saw, I'm just cutting on the push at the moment just to get the cut started because there's, there's really nothing in the middle to grab the blade. There we go. It 
turns out super glue and masking tape isn't such a great way of anchoring this after all, so off it comes and I'll just use the vise. <laughs> and I've just realised I've got a taper in this because I know that the final version is going to be tapered. I've got a one millimetre taper, so maybe using the vise isn't such a great idea. A couple of pieces of cork that seems to be holding. a bit of a struggle. The razor saw is now getting stuck so I think I'm just going to have to start filing and just take it very very gently. I've only got about a millimetre down but uh, this is awkward. I don't think I've got any machine tools that will do this. Um, not with any precision. I'm going to do this a different way. I've got to take 2.5 millimetres off, which is the thickness of these two, my square and my piece of uh, metal. So I've set the nut, sad nut, saddle, keep calling it a nut, um, at the right height. And then I'm going to come in from the side and take it off that way because then I can use the safe edge on the file to guide me and I think that should work a lot better. Yes. I think we're there. Um, we might be a little bit oversized. Um, I think it might be a little bit deep still, uh, might need to take even as much as a millimetre off it. And this dimension here should be just under two millimetres and it's 2.0 something at the moment. So it might be a bit tight in the uh, bridge slot, but we'll take it back to the guitar and try it out. A word of caution doing this, I've tried to keep a little bit of tension in the strings because I, I hate the way <laughs> that, that uh, strings um, revert to almost new condition and take another week to stabilise when you've, when you've taken them off a guitar. And I also don't want to take them off uh, because re-threading used strings is... I, I hate it. And I don't want to replace these strings because they're £16 Savarez. So, yeah. Um, a word of caution doing this. I've changed the angle of the string pull. It's now pulling upwards a little bit. Um, 45 degrees. Be very careful about doing this uh, because you don't want to have strings pulling up on the bridge. I haven't actually got much tension in these strings um, so I should be all right um, but I've, I've probably I'm probably going to have to go through a stabilization cycle again. It's probably going to take days for these strings to stabilize but this should make things a little bit easier for me and I don't have to re-thread secondhand strings. Hopefully I can get this saddle out by using the fact it's L-shaped and I can just lever under the back of it. Can I? Oh, oh dear. Yeah, I fitted this saddle really well. Oh, here we go. Have we got that? Oh, I'm rubbing away at the back of the, the bridge. Has that? Oh yes, that, that saddle has lifted. Let's see if I can slide it out. There we go. <laughs> It is a very well-fitted saddle. Yeah, unlike the old saddle, which was a very loose fit. Look at that, that's just, that's, that's the original saddle, which, uh, yeah, that's not good. Right, let's get the new saddle in. Now remember the compensation we need based on 18 millimeters between the 12th and 13th fret is 0.36 of a millimetre per cent and based on that these are the figures I've come up with this is EBG 
DAE. That figure looks a bit anomalous for the D string. Um, this is subject to error, uh, but we have the G string um, at 5.2, which again seems a bit big to me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to start at 3 millimeters for the, the, the E string and go up to 5 for the G string. Or, well, <laughs> I can't quite do 5. Um, we're right at the back of the saddle. There is a limitation how far back we can go putting an L-shaped saddle in. Um, because you, you'll, <laughs> I'll end up cutting the corner of the saddle when I try to crown the saddle. Um, so we'll go 3 to 5 for the, uh, for the solid strings and 2.5 to 3.7 for the wound strings and hopefully that should give us a good result. I don't believe that 4.1 millimeter. I've got my intonation points marked so we've just got to file the crown to those points and we've got to be a bit careful doing this because if I take too much off this edge we'll effectively cut the saddle in two. Hopefully you can see how I've left a, a millimetre or two of flat at the top. You can still see my little pencil marks where I wanted the intonation points. Um, so I haven't got a sharp edge, I want it a little bit rounded. But we're right the way at the back on the G-string. We're at the rear of the uh, saddle slot on the E, a little bit further back on the B, and then similar pattern for the D, but we don't go quite as far back. Um, we've only got about a millimetre between those two strings, the D and the, the bottom E. So uh, that's all looking pretty good, so we'll just smooth everything out with a little bit of uh, 240 grit sandpaper and we'll try it on the guitar. It's actually 400 grit. <laughs> a little bit too tight. Would it be wrong to hit it with a tiny hammer? Well, the fit's good. Have I got the intonation points right now? The, uh, the strings are rapidly going flat on this because I've lost all tuning stability, but uh, we're looking good. The tuner's having to hunt a little bit for the note. That might still be a little bit flat, actually. They're all within about three cents. Although, as I say, the... That might still be a little bit sharp. <laughs> Tricky to do this. So. That's pretty spot on. That one might be a little bit sharp. Oh, hang on, something went wrong there. No, I think that's spot on. I have raised the action very slightly, about half a millimetre. Um, I, I have room for manoeuvre if I need to make further adjustments, and I probably will lower the saddle a bit, but I want to do a fret dressing, 
and I will be putting new strings on this. So I'm just going to live with this for a week or so, see how I get on with it, maybe make another final adjustment, and uh, we're there. But I, I think this is the solution. We're, we're certainly a lot closer now than it's uh, than when we started out. Um, very close. The G still not quite there, I don't think, but uh, I'll live with this for a week and, and see how I go. never understood with nylon strings why it takes so long for them to settle down but they do settle down they stabilize and yet that can be undone by just a couple of hours of uh, lack of tension on them and you have to go through the whole cycle again I, I don't understand that if anybody understands that please let me know in the comments uh, but I, I think we're there um, I will be doing a fret dressing on this whether or not I film it I don't know but I, I, I think I am very close to a perfectly set up guitar. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Um, bye.